We are here in our Forest.com application. I'm here on the setup screens, which you get are accessible by clicking your name anywhere in the app and then going to setup. And so from here, we're just going to start off and build some reports. I want to go ahead and create a new folder for my report. So we always hit reports by hitting the reports tab. And once I'm in here, I can no thanks. I don't need to have a wizard, although the interface is very good about when things change or there's new features, you can walk through those sort of guided displays. Here's a folder structure where you can have folders that contain reports, I can see the existing reports already baked into the system. We're not going to use any of these, we want to create our own. So we can go ahead and create a brand new folder, and we'll call this training folder. At the moment it doesn't have any reports, and it's accessible by all users, I'm not defining any sharing rules. And so training folder shows up over here. Over here, now I can click New Report, and I get the Report Wizard. Over here, I'm going to have both any changed objects that we created, things like contacts and things like that that are donors. I'm already going to get some existing relationships. It's going to try to figure some of those out, donors and accounts, things like that. And it's also going to recognize my new objects, like candidates or campaign events. And it's going to try to figure out some interesting dimensions between the relationships. So I'm going to pick Candidates with Donations and click Create using that as my base report type. So from here, I have some choices here. I can drag a few different fields. So I might pick donation date. I can pick donation state. And I can pick donation amount and put all of those on the report. And I can see that in the preview here. So I'm getting actually a live look at the data when I'm doing this, which makes it really easy to do this. So I can click save, assuming this is the way I want it, and give it a name. And I've got a simple report. So this is a simple tabular report. Again, you can see there's different options here. In this case, I just want the simple tabular report. I want to be able to just see a list of my data. I could apply filters here if I wanted to, only showing certain things. I can add field, field filters, obviously ranges of information if I want the created date or the modified date, only if it's within a certain window. But in this case, this gives me a very simple way, no visualization, but enough information I to just get some good summaries of data. I'll go ahead and save and close. I can drag that right into the training folder. And now my training folder has that one. So I can click new report again. And this time I want a little something different. So I'll expand other reports again to see what it's got for me out of the box. And I see candidates with donations and campaign events. That could be good. So let's click create a report of that type that has all those objects available. So I've got candidate, I've got donation, and I've got campaign event as it's brought in all three of those objects because those are all related here. So once I have that report and I preloaded some campaign events, I put a couple campaign events in there and tied some donations to those. I can go ahead and add some more fields here so I could add donation amount from there. And so I can see that. So here are the two different campaign events. Here's the donation amounts. Let's say now I want to actually switch this to a summary view. I might want to create a grouping here based on the actual campaign event name. So I can put that there in the grouping now. I've got each campaign event. Here's the first one, meeting for biz, big business, three records, party at candidate's house, two records. So I've got it grouping now based off of that. Now I can add a formula field all the way up at the top. And I can define what my formula might look like. We'll act on all the summary levels. So it'll put it all together here. And we'll do a sum of Actually, we can do that here. We can do a donation amount. We can do sum of donation amount. Do that again. So we can pick that for us here. So we can do, it already shows us the number amount. So I have donation amount. So I can already choose the sum or the largest or the smallest. Again, it recognizes where my number fields are. I can click OK. And as you can see, each one of these now, it's summarized here. It summarized these three. Here it summarized these two. So able to add formula fields, they're doing calculations based on those groupings. You'll also notice because we added it all summary levels, it also put a grand total here of the total amounts. Because we acted at all summary levels, it did that for us. Next up, let's add a chart. So we might add a pie chart, and I can quickly see the values I want to use, whether it's total donations or maybe record counts, what each wedge should be, in this case maybe the campaign event name. So I see I have more records in this one than the other one, or it could be based on total donations instead, because maybe the one gives me more money than the other one. We have formatting settings for whether we want to call the chart. We have the text. We can do a lot of nice formatting of this to show us even hover values of what we want to do. Can I enabling hovering? Where should I put this sort of stuff? And I get a nice little preview then as well of what that's going to look like. When we click OK, we can see that get injected there right above. Again, we can mouse over because we enabled hovering and it shows us the values we want there. 
And of course I can edit or delete the chart or just keep it as it is. For showing here, we can do things like conditional highlighting. Assuming things mattered here, we could do that. But either way, we're able to see some charts and we're able to see the data we'd like. I'll go ahead and save this report. Summary report. And here is where I can also pick a folder. We did drag and drop before. But if we choose to, I can go ahead and pick training folder here and click save. Finally, let's close this and create one more report so we can see the matrix report. Once again, we'll create a new one. We'll use other reports again to find the objects that we want. And we'll choose candidates with donations again here and click create. We'll go right ahead and switch to matrix view, which as you see gives us this kind of double-sided grid. So I want to add states to the rows. I want a donation date to the columns. So here it obviously stretches them out, but you know I can even go over here and do some groupings. Maybe I want to group this by week. And so I can see how many donations by state by week. I can make the groupings even a little further, a little tighter there. And so I can see all of August. And so I'm able to see this information now by state and by date. So you can figure out whatever sort of pivot might make sense for you. You can easily do a lot of these things in these reports, in this case a matrix one, to look at multi-dimensional reports and maybe learn something new by looking at data by maybe by source and by method, because maybe you'll find out a certain state uses credit cards all the time, so that's how you should target them, or things like that. Different ways you can look at this information and see this sort of grid-based summary based on the multiple dimensions. Finally, I'll go ahead and save this one as matrix report, save that into my training folder, and then we'll see shortly how once we have all those reports in our folder, it's very easy to go ahead and execute those and consume the data.